Mr. Justfield TV is going to tell us what exactly happened with this DD-13. The uh, DD-13 gave you a problem. Yes. Yeah, um, so this is 2021 Freightliner, standard Detroit. They pretty much gotten it refined down to the science these days. I mean, it's hard to find a more reliable engine, just, just being honest. I'm partial to Cummins, but Detroit is still great. It's, it's good old American power, as they say. Right. However, every engine has its caveats and quirks. As some of you may know, Detroit's have a system that they came out with, I want to say within the last three to four years, where instead of using a APU system, some people may opt to use what's called opti idle Essentially what that does is it has two purposes. The main purpose being to maintain engine temperature without having to do a constant idle in the winter. When you get up in the northern frontier, the badlands, the great beyond, you want to keep your engine temperature at the optimal range to where if you're in a cold situation, you can at least crank your truck to get on where you need to go. Or if you get stuck, you don't have to worry about calling a wrecker to come pull your truck. The other purpose of it is to maintain creature comfort, meaning your in-cab um, air conditioner temperature, or if you have it set to run on heat, it'll maintain the cab within five degrees of your heat or cold preference. And essentially, what it'll do is, once it hits that temperature range, it'll turn the truck off. That way you're not constantly burning fuel, but again, you still have that creature comfort because what will happen is, is once it gets outside of that temperature range, the truck will start itself automatically. That's set by a thermostat that's actually in the bunk. Um, normally it would be the auxiliary AC control, which that is the normal function when the truck is running. However, when the truck is off, that becomes a thermostat system that maintains your cab temperature. So, while that technology is quite advanced, the issue is that it's still bound by the basic physics of mechanical product. That meaning, it's heavily relying on the starter to be functioning properly. Now, what I've discovered has happened with my truck in particular, which I'm sure other trucks of the same year are having similar problems, is that uh, the factory, I don't know why they do it, but they get this idea to paint the parts before they install them. And as we all know, most of these truck parts are built by machines now. It's not actually being done by hand. So after the parts have been painted, and installed onto the engine if anybody knows anything about painted parts it's a bad idea you don't want to put paint on metal surfaces that have to go together because it's going to create a very very small fractional gap and over time that very small gap is what it's going to cause parts to basically work themselves loose not to the degree of falling off but it's going to cause things to be out of alignment what happened with my starter is that over the time that it's been running, mind you, the truck ain't even a year old yet. As it's been running, the starter has just ever so slightly worked itself loose to where it's created what's called a flat spot. Basically, what a flat spot is in relation to starters is where you have the gear mechanism that meets up with the engine flywheel. There's a binding point or the flat spot between the starter and the flywheel to where the starter can't activate. What happened with my truck, while using Opti Idle, because as far as the actual, I guess, programming, that works, what happened was my truck kept trying to start itself while being stuck in this flat spot and ran my battery down. $1,800 later, we find out I'm just gonna have to get another starter. Now, does the Freightliner know of this uh, problem? Yes, in fact, the mechanic that I spoke to at the dealership said it is pretty common on these later which would be between 2018 up to current year, that is a problem on some of the trucks to where the flat spot is, be, is created because of paint, excuse me, because of parts being painted mm. prior to installation. The solution is to have the starter replaced under warranty. However, because of Freightliner's policy, they have to be able to duplicate the same issue for them to go ahead and sign off on it. Now, prior years, the mechanics could do it because they know it's a problem. However, because of policy changes, they have to actually have a documented process of showing that this is the specific issue. It has to throw codes, the code has to be registered into Freightliner's consult machine, and then after it gets signed off by whoever's at the Freightliner headquarters, then they can say, okay, 
will replace this part under warranty. Wow. And because I don't have time to deal with that or sit around and wait on that, I'm just going to buy the starter myself and have it replaced or put it on myself if I find the time to do it. Where did they put the starter on the engine? So the Where's starter, which it's pretty much been the same way for the last however many years they've been making this engine design, but the starter is actually located on the passenger side uh, near the transmission underneath the uh, turbo manifold. Which I know it can be a little difficult to see, but it's right there underneath the uh, underneath that section there. Yeah, I think it's found right there. Yes, on Cummins engines for specifically, it's usually on the driver's side, but every engine has a different side. It just depends on the year was, when it was made, all those things. Wow, that is crazy. We're going to ask some more questions with Phil, who is an accomplished uh, mechanic, cars, and he can work on um, actual uh, uh, trucks. My tech guy, we return.